In the public has been extremely profitable so far this NFL season. 11 and 6 the first three weeks, fading all the selections I've given you in this video, including 5 and 1, fading the two most public plays each and every week. I'm going to give you four very public plays for this Sunday and three additional public dogs. Red flag alert! All that's coming up free with analysis here in just a moment. Hi, this is Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com, right back here on Wager Talk TV with your week four Sunday, September the 29th NFL Fade the Public video. And what I do each and every week, if you're new to this video, I give you the most public sides. I'd look at several different sources for consensus data. I've been doing this for several years. And long term, fading the most public sides is a profitable angle. And there's certain subsets that work even better. Uh, let's recap last week. Fading the two most public plays last week were very profitable as both Tampa Bay and Las Vegas Raiders lost outright. The ugly duckling Panthers and Broncos won straight up as dogs last week which means fading the top two most public plays each week so far has gone five and one. It's been very profitable and overall 11 and six fading all plays and opinions. Uh, the Bills did cash easily on Monday night. That was the third most public play last week. And then they, the uh, public dog split out. Packers and Chargers went one and one. So yet another profitable week fading all the selections in the video. All three weeks so far we've turned to profit and 11 and six. But once again, fading the two most public plays has gone five and one so far this season. So let's get right to it. I'm going to give you the three most public sides and also the most public dog this week here in just a moment. But let's start with the most public play for week four, and that is the Cincinnati Bengals minus the four and a half. Now, on the surface, this might be a little surprising because Cincinnati lost outright on Monday Night Football to not my Washington Commanders. And of course, the Panthers won straight up as a very contrarian call, but the public is jumping right back on board and fading Carolina once again, and I don't blame them. They've had very good success so far doing it this season. Um, they faded them in both weeks one and two with success as the Saints and Chargers beat the Panthers 73-13. to Last week, I had a strong best bet for my clients on Carolina. I liked the quarterback change to Andy Dalton. I thought it could be a spark for the team. Whether that's a long-term solution or not, we'll have to see. Uh, they did throw for 306 passing yards, almost 10 yards per pass last week. So he definitely helped them against what's been a pretty good Raiders defense going back to the second half of last season. And they also did not turn the ball over after having four turnovers in the first two weeks. So... Yes, Carolina does look like a better team with Andy Dalton, but they're still one of the weakest teams in the NFL. And I was a little surprised to see Cincinnati the most public play this week, because if anything, I thought the Bengals might be a little bit of a contrarian call after losing straight up as a touchdown favorite on Monday Night Football. Uh, keep in mind, the Washington Commanders have looked really good with Jaden Daniels at quarterback. Not sure Andy Dalton's at that same level, and uh, we'll see how this one plays out. But once again, I was a little surprised to see the Bengals as the most public play this week. Uh, but that is the situation. By the way, Cincinnati's offense has really struggled to run the ball so far this season, and um, that could be a concern here as well. Laying points on the road with a team that doesn't run the ball well is always dicey. They're averaging only about 89 rushing yards per game. All right, the second most public play this week is the Houston Texans minus six, and uh, this is more of a fate of Jacksonville than anything else, and not a surprise. You know, I mentioned last week the third most public play was Buffalo on Monday night, and Buffalo was never in doubt as they just smoked Jacksonville, scored on the first five straight possessions, five touchdowns on five straight possessions, and uh, routed Jacksonville, of course, on national TV Monday night, 47-10. to 10. Uh, The public was against Jacksonville last week, so not a surprise they'd come right back here and against Jacksonville once again this week. Houston Texans, the worst team in the NFL, actually, I'm sorry, the second worst team in the NFL two years ago. Keep in mind, they had the worst record, and they were going to get the number one pick, probably Bryce Young, and they won that meaningless Week 17 or Week 18, Game 17, two years ago to fall to the number two spot. And they took Stroud instead. Wouldn't be fascinating to be able to go back and swap the quarterbacks and see if Vince Young would have been, or I'm sorry, no, Bryce Young would have been that much better with the Houston Texans. We'll never know. Uh, but Te Houston obviously had a huge season last year. I did think they were a team that might regress this season. Uh, but they're off to a 2-1 and one straight up start. But they have not covered a point spread yet. 0-2-1, oh, uh, if you count a push in the Bears' Week 2 game, they failed to cover against the Colts by half a point in Week 1, and of course that 34-7 blowout loss last week against Minnesota. So they have been a little bit overinflated, and you can make a case that this line's maybe inflated as well uh, due to the fact that uh, Houston is minus 6 against a Jacksonville team that nobody wants to touch. 0-3 oh, straight up, 1-2 against the spread. 
Um, so this is once again an ugly duckling. I thought Jacksonville was in a good spot on Monday Night Football, and they came up extremely short. That's always a red flag for me when a team vastly underperforms in what looks like a decent spot. And their passing offense has really been bad this year. Five yards per pass attempt. And uh, the Texans actually have had a very good pass defense. 5.8 yards per pass allowed. Um, so the matchup does not look favorable for Jacksonville here. and They sure did not look good on Monday night. And now they have to travel on a short week on top of that. And the public likes the Houston Texans minus six. Third most public play this week is the Pittsburgh Steelers minus two as a road favorite at Indianapolis. You know, one of the public dogs last week was the uh, L.A. Chargers. And they, of course, came up short in what I thought was a very difficult scheduling spot in Pittsburgh. And we talked about that here in the video last week. Uh, the public faded the Steelers last week, but now they're backing them. And this is an angle I haven't checked it because it doesn't happen too often. But it is always interesting to me when a team goes from being a play against to a play on public team within one week. The public is fickle. They've got a short-term memory indeed. And they have quickly forgotten that they faded Pittsburgh last week. Or maybe they like Pittsburgh because Pittsburgh cost them last week. Uh, regardless, I thought that was a good spot for the Steelers, a bad spot for the Chargers. So I'm not going to read too much into that win. And um, I was a little surprised to see this one make the public list on the road lane two at Indianapolis. You know, I mentioned how the Colts covered that two-point loss as a two-and-a-half-point dog against Houston back in week one. Overall, Indianapolis this season is two-and-one straight up or against the spread, rather, 2-1 and one against the spread, um, even though the uh, Colts have gone just 1-2 and two straight up. They lost those first two games, close games, against Houston and Green Bay, and then they beat Chicago last week, 21-16. Um, they finally had a turnover edge for the first time all season, a 3-2 turnover edge, but they still committed six turnovers in their first three games. 140 rushing yards or more in each of the past two games, and that'll be the key in this one, is that they can control the line of scrimmage a bit against the Steelers' defense that looks pretty stout once again this season. Pittsburgh's allowed less than nine points a game and less than five yards per play so far, and not sure that this Indianapolis Colts offense, which is averaging only 19 points a game, could step up and do something. Now, with the 6.5 yards per play that the Colts are averaging, though, is impressive when you look at the tough slate of defensive teams they faced their three opponents have averaged to allow just 5.3, and the Colts have actually gained 6.5 in those games. Uh, Steelers given up 4.9, so another tough defensive opponent. But I do think the Colts' offense is a little bit better than their overall numbers indicate. Turnovers have somewhat uh, limited what their production has looked like. Uh, but this could be a live dog here, the Indianapolis Colts. Uh, looks like a little bit of an overreaction to last week's Pittsburgh win against the Chargers, who were not in a good spot. Uh, so I would actually fade the public here. I think Indianapolis is worth a look on Sunday afternoon. All right, one more official public play for you, and then three additional public dog leans. But I'm going to give you a very public dog, and this is an official fade the public selection, one of the most public underdogs I've seen this year, and that's the L.A. Rams plus three at Chicago. And uh, this one is interesting to me. You know, I didn't think the public would necessarily be jumping on board the Rams uh, this season after their one and two start. But the fact that they beat the 49ers outright as a six-point dog, I guess, got a lot of people's attention. This is still a team that has rushed for 98 rushing yards or less in all three games this season. Um, they have not moved the ball too well um, as far as on the ground goes. And uh, that's why I was a little surprised to see the public back. In fact, they've been outrushed by almost 100 yards per game this year, 3.4 to 5.1 yards per carry. And um, defensively, uh, their pass numbers are pretty bad as well. 6.8 to 9.4 allowed. It's one of the worst defenses in the NFL statistically, giving up over 30 points a game, nearly 7 yards per play, and almost 9.5 yards per pass. Yet the public is backing them for some reason. Maybe it's because the Bears' passing offense has looked awful so far this season as they've been averaging just 4.5 yards per pass play. So obviously Chicago cannot get down early in this game and try to play catch-up. Uh, rookie Caleb Williams has not been the solution so far, and I think this is more of a play against Chicago than necessarily a play on the Rams. Uh, but once again, not sure the Rams exactly are a public-type play, so I was a little surprised to see this much consensus. And once again, whenever the public is on a dog, it's always a red flag because they normally play favorites, and this was actually a pretty high percentage on the dog really jumped out to me. It's probably the most public underdog we've had so far this season, and that is the LA Rams plus three at one o'clock Eastern in Chicago. Now, those are your four official public plays here for week four NFL. Once again, the most public uh, side, once again, is the Cincinnati Bengals minus four and a half, followed by the Houston Texans minus six, then the Steelers minus two, and the Rams plus three, one of the most public dogs I've seen so far this season. 
There are three more public dogs as well that were additional liens. I'm going to give those to you in just a moment. Quick reminder, if you're finding these videos useful, please give it a thumbs up, a like, and comment below. I read all the comments. I reply back to as many as I can. I really do appreciate the support. Let me know where you agree or disagree with the public this week and what other NFL best bets you like. Hey, throw in some player props as well. If you're looking at some player props, let's learn and earn and win together here on Wager Talk TV. Don't forget also hit subscribe and click that bell as well so you know instantly when this Fade the Public video is posted each and every weekend of the NFL season. Don't forget to check out my college football top 25 video every week and also daily free play videos for baseball, basketball, and football. Click subscribe and click that bell for instant alerts so you never miss out here on Wager Talk TV. If you like my official best bets for this weekend, check out my page, Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com. And while you're there, be sure to check out my Red Hot College and Pro Football. And it's no surprise, last two weeks, 10 and 4, 71% in all college and pro best bets. And the last two seasons combined entering this year, I was number one in ATS Units 1 in college and pro football combined the past two seasons. And oh yeah, baseball's been fantastic this year as well. End of the weekend on a current 31-13 and 13 best bet run in baseball. And the playoffs start next week. World Series right around the corner. NBA starts in less than a month. Number one units won the last three years combined in the NBA. Number one in college hoops a couple years ago. So I know what you're thinking. How do I decide? Baseball, football, basketball. You don't have to decide. And all sports, all access, all inclusive subscription gets every play, every sport, every day. So you never miss out. And this weekend, you can get an extra month for free. Sign up for the three-month package and you get a fourth bonus month included for free. It's an instant $299 value for free when you sign up this weekend. Buy a three-month and you get the fourth month included for free. No promo code needed. Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com. Hey, get there quicker with shortcut wt.buzz slash sm. Don't forget to also post a free play each and every day with analysis. Check out those bonus free plays on my page as well. All right, let's look at three additional public liens for this week, and all three are public underdogs. wanted to give these to you. There's most public dogs I've seen in quite a while on one NFL card, and we'll start off at 1 o'clock Eastern with the Minnesota Vikings plus 2.5 at Green Bay. Public is leaning towards Minnesota plus the 2.5. You know, it's interesting. Last week they were on the Packers with the quarterback uncertainty. They saw the Packers getting points, and the Packers were a public dog, and they routed uh, Tennessee fairly easily, 30-14. to 14. But now this week, all of a sudden, they're jumping ship. Jordan Love is still listed as questionable, even though he's been practicing this week. He practiced last week, did not play. If Malik Willis goes, obviously, it'd be a weaker Green Bay squad. Uh, But once again, the public is back in the Vikings. And I don't think they're fading the Packers. They're just back in a Vikings team that is a perfect 3-0 straight up and against the spread, including all three wins coming as either a one-point favorite or dog. They haven't been favored by more than one point in any game this season. Dog in the last two and they're 3-0 straight up in ATS. But once again, back-to-back straight-up dog wins, and now the public is backing them. Red flag alert. I think Green Bay is worth a look here. I do expect Jordan Love to be back this week. But keep an eye. I want to have Love at quarterback, but at minus 2.5, uh, Packers look like they might have some value in this game as the public is leaning towards the Vikings as a public dog. Also at 1 o'clock Eastern, the public likes the New Orleans Saints, plus 3 at Atlanta. Uh, once again, public likes the New Orleans Saints this week. Uh, they were against, they were on them against Carolina in Week One. Also, um, New Orleans blew a three nothing lead heading into the fourth quarter last week. Lost 15-12 to the Eagles. But keep in mind, they were being outgained by almost 200 yards entering the fourth quarter, yet had a three nothing lead. Uh, the Saints have done a good job taking care of the ball. They've had exactly one turnover in each game, and they forced seven overall this season. Uh, we'll see if things change now on the road, though, against an Atlanta team that's only forced one turnover the past two games. Uh, by the way, the um, Falcons have gone under in all three games this season. Defense is still kind of a learning pro- learn- learning progress uh, with Kirk Cousins, the new quarterback, 17 or less in two of their three games. But the defense has been pretty solid at times this season, and that could keep them in this one. They're giving up just 4.8 yards per play this season and only 5.8 yards per pass. And this, of course, will be against the New Orleans team that's been excellent throwing the ball, averaging nearly nine yards per pass. But it does look like a favorable matchup for the Falcons, and uh, they are actually a three-point home favorite. And so it's understandable why the public is jumping on New Orleans, uh, what appears to be the better team, at least on paper so far. Two and one straight up ATS, only lost by three points. Uh, But this is definitely a contrarian call if you're playing the Falcons minus three, as the public likes the Saints. And then finally, your Sunday night football game, Buffalo at Baltimore. 
Now, I did do a, a deep dive five-minute video on this one on the total. I do have a total recommendation, so check out my solo video for the Sunday night game between the Bills and Ravens here on Wager Talk TV. Once again, click subscribe, click the bell for an instant alert when it's released. But we're going to look at the side here in this video, and that's because the public is leaning towards Buffalo as another public dog. And I didn't point this out in the Vikings-Packers game, but one of the reasons you don't fade in the public works is because you get adjusted line value. The line's a little bit shorter than it should be. And that's definitely the case here once again because the public likes Buffalo catching points, but it's just two and a half. Otherwise, this line is probably three or higher. Vikings are probably three or higher. Saints are probably three and a half or more. So all three of these games are right around that key number of three, and the lines are a little shorter than they should be because the public is back in the dog. Once again, Buffalo was a public play last week against Jacksonville, and they routed them on national TV. So not a surprise uh, that Joe Public is coming right back here with the Bills again this week. And Buffalo has looked fantastic. Perfect 3-0 start. They've scored 31 points or more in all three games. Only one turnover all season has had a large part of that. Baltimore, meanwhile, lost their first two games. Bounce back win, an impressive bounce back against Dallas last week in which they had over 450 total yards, held the Cowboys to just 51 rushing yards. In fact, Baltimore has allowed just 51, 27, and 72 rushing yards in their three games this season. So the Bills will probably be somewhat limited on the ground. But Buffalo should have some success thrown against a suspect Baltimore secondary. Um, this Baltimore secondary so far this season is allowing 7.5 yards per pass. Uh, but Baltimore does have the rushing edge almost 6 yards per carry this year per game and also almost 200 yards per game on the ground. And the Bills are giving up 4.7 yards per rush. So Baltimore probably has the edge on the line of scrimmage as far as running the ball. And uh, they're only a two and a half point home favorite. Once again, that's because the public likes the dog. And I think this line is probably a little bit shorter for that reason. All right. Once again, three additional public dog leans on the Vikings, Saints, and Bills. Seven games for you this Sunday, man. This is a deep fade the public video. We'll see how it turns out. Once again, fading the two most public plays is five and one this season. Fading all the public plays and additional leans is 11 and six. And oh, by the way, I know many of you in the comment pointed out that last Thursday night, the Patriots were a public dog. I mentioned that on the solo video. Yes, the Patriots were definitely a public dog last Thursday when they lost to the Jets, but we're not counting that in the official record because it was a Thursday game. I know I gave that to you in the solo standalone video earlier in the week for Thursday night football, but I'm only going to count the Sunday and Monday games in this video because I record it on Friday night and we air it on Saturday. So that's to be fair, but that technically was another game that would have cashed for. And I know many of you had that since I gave you that free play video. Hey, speaking of those free play videos, click subscribe, click the bell for an instant alert so you never miss out. Thumbs up, like these videos as well. It's always appreciated. And comment below, where do you agree or disagree with the public? What games are you using this Sunday and Monday for NFL Week 4 action? I read all the comments and I reply back. And once again, if you want my official NFL best bets for this Sunday, don't miss out. Number one ranked the last two seasons in NFL and college football ATS profit. And 10-4 and four the last two weeks, 71% in football. Baseball in a 31-13 and 13 run as we head into the weekend on best bets. Basketball about to start. Great time to get an all-sports all-access. And right now, this weekend only, when you buy the three-month package, we're including a fourth month for free. An instant $299 bonus discount for free. When you buy three months, you get four right now. Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com. Or if you haven't gotten on board yet, I know many of you got the one-year all-access the past couple weeks. I've offered that special promo code. Shame on you if you sat back and watched winter after winter pass you by. You can still get on board and save over $800 instantly with promo code SM365. That's over an $800 instant discount of the one-year all-access. Works out to just $3 a day, just over a dollar per play for every football, baseball, basketball, college, and pro best bet for the next 365 days and nights. Just use promo code SM365 at checkout for over an $800 instant savings. Now, you don't have to memorize the promo codes or the special offers. I post them all on my homepage. Go check it out. You'll see the daily best bets, the daily free play. That's right, a bonus free play every day with analysis on my page. And then right below the free play are the weekland, weekly specials. Weekland. I made a new word up because they were weekly, but they end this weekend. They're weekland. No, seriously, though, this weekend is your last chance to buy the three months, get the fourth free. And I have extended that once again, the one-year all-access promo code SM365 as well. But the full details, you don't have to memorize it here. Go check them out on my page and be sure to check out that daily free play as well. Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com. Hey, get there quicker with shortcut wt.buzz slash SM. Follow me on X and Instagram at Steve Merrill, two R's, one L, at Steve Merrill on X and Instagram. And stay tuned here to Wager Talk TV for some more great free betting content 
coming up next.